My lab um, here at MIT uh, basically is studying sugars. Sugars virtually coat all cells. They also co coat proteins that are outside the, outside the cells and dramatically influence uh, not only protein functions, but also how uh, the cell behaves. Uh, for instance, how the cell communicate, how the cell uh, sort of responds to its environment, and uh, uh, basic functions of a cell are dramatically influenced by sugars. The complexity associated with characterizing sugar not only involves the numerous building blocks that make them, but also the fact that you could have both linear and branched sugars. So you need very different kinds of techniques or measurements that you need to make so that you can understand the various pieces of this puzzle and how the puzzle comes together. So you can actually view sequencing sugars analogous to solving a puzzle. There are numerous kinds of sugars and you need various kinds of tools that will enable you to make measurements. What I mean by measurements, you need enzymes to clip them, you need different kinds of chemicals to label them. So what David has done here is he's basically isolated or released sugars from cells and specifically tagged them with the fluorescent dye so that he can look at this minute amount of sugars that are derived from these cells. Jonathan then uses enzymes to chop the sugars into smaller pieces and then separates them using this instrument known as capillary electrophoresis. It has a laser that is able to excite the green fluorescent tag that was added to the sugars and it separates them into discrete minute pieces that Jonathan is able to identify in terms of what those species are using different kinds of probes, different kinds of labels. Each experiment becomes a measurement to solve the puzzle. There's an important link with the drug that's already used in the clinic uh, known as heparin. Heparin is a sugar-based anticoagulant drug that's been around for the last 75 years, but very simply put, it's a complex mixture like a soup and many different things, but a very small part of that soup represents the true biological function of heparin. So using our methodology, we were able to really address some of the fundamental structure functional relationship of these molecules and developed a whole new panel of improved heparins that could uh, go into the clinic and they're being readied for clinical trials in the next few years. We're at a point where exciting technologies are being developed to study sugars. Um, sequencing sugars, making sugars in large amounts, characterizing sugars in, in various cells or tissues, and trying to really understand the structure, structural basis of the function of sugars. Um, to me, technology is like a key that opens doors, doors of, doors of opportunity that enable us to not only understand fundamental science of, or the biology of how sugars regulate function, uh, but at the same time, how we will be able to use this information to unmet medical conditions such as cancer or emerging areas like infectious disease, which, um, uh, you know, threaten us on a day-to-day -day basis.